No, because I need someone to play the role of client from hell. <laughs> no, and I and I need to and I need to pick somebody who I know won't take it personally when I do that. Okay. So um, Got it. yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah. Just think apocalypse now. So the, to begin to troubleshoot, um, takes one to know one. To, to begin the troubleshoot. <laughs> Don't try to top me. Uh, so, <laughs> I may be small, but I'm wiry. Uh, the process, again, you know, with the Elman induction, I, I hate to phrase it this way, but this is that response to that person who said, you need to bring in real people for us to practice with. When you go into it with the expectation that it's going to go that well, that's your result every single time in my experience. If you're going into it thinking, and whether we want to get into an esoteric, metaphysical, or anything else, but if you're going into it thinking, this guy's not going to lose the numbers, it's not going to work, you're going to be projecting that lack of confidence. Um, you know. In the process today, it's a simple matter of following some simple instructions. You're going to do great. Any questions before we get started? No. Okay, good. Now, I'm just kind of new at this, so I hope it works. But, you know, just be nice to me. Is that all right? <laughs> <laughs> so the bit about confidence, again, um, playing actor playing the role of. There's some truth to it. Um, so... This will kind of be a back and forth because at times I'll give you an instruction that I'll just kind of mutter, do this instead. But basically, don't do the instructions. So what if we're at the beginning of the process, he walks in my room and he sits down in the chair. It's the moment I'm about to pull over. Let me actually walk through this so you can see it. Um, if you would turn the chair and face that way for a moment. Typically, there's my office back there. This will be opposite side because I don't have a right side in this space. Uh, we're chatting. We're having a conversation. I'm sitting down to it about this distance, which is not... Too far away, not too close. It's as Goldilocks wants just right. And we've done the pre-talk bit, and we've gone through everything. Do you have any questions before I hypnotize you? No. Okay, great. I'm just going to turn these lights off. They get old after a while. I'll swing over here next to you. Actually, the chair does most of the work for us. Remember, it's a recliner. I'll hit the button on the side. Would you be comfortable recline back? Uh, no. No. Okay, they're good. Just sit upright. Perfectly fine. The hell's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> No, and I'll sometimes get the answer of they prefer to stay sitting up. Okay, very few, but sometimes you get that one. Um, but that's kind of the transitional moment. I'll give you an option, though, which I don't do this in my office. I've been trained in this. I believe in it, but I've just never liked it. The premise would be this. You come into my office, and here's the really comfortable recliner. And you'd walk in, you'd sit over here. We'd sit, and we'd have the conversation over here. Are you ready to do hypnosis with me? Yes. Okay, great. Follow me over here. Have a seat in the hypno chair. And we'd have that transition. The premise is we're anchoring that chair to be the hypnosis. And if you want to get really sneaky about this, you make that chair about as uncomfortable as you can make it, but you position it so you're looking at the recliner. So somewhere in your mind you're thinking, that thing over there looks so much more comfortable. And the moment you sit down, ooh, half the work is done. I know many people who do that. I've just never chosen to. But I do set a transitional tone in my office of now we're through with the conversation, let's do the hypnosis. And that's where I stand up, hit the lights, swing over close to you. So I'm off to your side now. Uh, what if in this moment, and this will happen sometimes, let me say this and then we'll take the question. He suddenly sits down and he's ready for it. He closes his eyes. Close your eyes. Do I go, oh, great, he's ready for me. Let's get rolling. No, because this is a process of following instructions in your mind and body know what to do. And he's doing his own thing. So I'll do it in a very friendly, positive way. And I even make a joke out of it. Hey, let your eyes open up. Don't get ahead of me. <laughs> it's a simple process today. Just a simple thing of following my instructions, your mind and body are known to do. <laughs> what if he sits down and he goes with the hands up into the meditation or whatever it may be? The heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> and I tend not to be someone that ever wants to, you can relax down. I tend not to be one that ever wants to put down someone's belief systems. Um, I've only ever can think of one client who actually also was a student that every time, now I'll phrase it this way, throughout the entire seven days of the class, throughout the entire experience as a client, I just couldn't get compliance from her. And then finally I just nailed it at a meetup when she finally showed up again, is that she'd always sit down and put the hands out and I'd just ask, what are you doing? And she goes, well that's what I do when I meditate. And I go, how does that go for you? Well, I'm really not good at that. It's like, so since you're not good at that, let's do things differently here. I'm going to pick up your hand. You see how it just falls right there? Yeah, leave it right there. That's all we need. Don't work too hard. And since then, she's become a phenomenal hypnosis client. Why? 
It's the same advice I gave you on the first day. She was trying to add so much extra stuff to it that didn't need to be there. So if the client sits down, they're there to follow your process, at least in terms of our entry point to the process. So that's why I also like this bit about follow my hand up with your eyes, because if he already closes his eyes, he's not following my instructions. Very polite about it. Let your eyes open, just follow my pace here, look right at my hand, and perhaps I'll be a little bit more specific with my language now. I never tend to be one that goes directly to, he's not following my instructions, he's resistant, he's a jerk, he hates me. No. Perhaps it just means I need to phrase it a better way. And this is just a good theme in all things life. There was a pain specialist actually that used to be up the road. I sent this guy so many referrals and I never got one back from him. The early stages of things. Could I have gone, Frank's an idiot, he hates me. I'm not gonna send him anything more. No, I scheduled a meeting with Frank. How are the people doing that I've sent you? Wonderful. Let me ask you this, what do you need to better understand about what I do? What types of situations do you run into that you think would be a challenge up until now? Well, this. Okay, good. So if it's a matter of the compliance of doing the physical therapy exercises, that's what I'm an expert in, helping people to do those things they know they should be doing, but they're not. So the next time you have someone that's not doing the stuff, rather than getting frustrated, consider that a referral for me. And now there's a wonderful stream until he moved. Um, so again, if there's ever a moment where I give an instruction, the basic understanding is back up, distract, deepen, re-enter is the process. So as you pick it, let the arm be loose up and relaxed, he helps me out the first time. Okay, let's apply some more metaphors. Let it be like a slab of granite or marble. Maybe I'll use the negative suggestion. Don't help me out. You're here today to help me let you do all the to let me do all the work for you. Just change the suggestions around re-enter in as opposed to going, oh, resistant, not gonna work. So let's begin to go through step by step of this process, just so you understand the troubleshooting, which these are good things to have. So Follow my hand up with your eyes. He does it. Good. And as you exhale, let the eyes close. Good. Relax your body. Send that feeling down across your body and so forth. We're into the first phase of small muscle catalepsy. Relax your eyelids to the point where you know they just won't work. Test them. Satisfy yourself. Option number one, he just sits there motionless and he doesn't give me anything. I want to see an actual test. So, you can let the eyes open for this. There's an old bit, an old sort of physiological stunt, and everybody do this now. Close your eyes, roll your eyes up as far back as you can possibly make them with those eyes closed, and keep the eyes in that position. Now try to open your eyes. You cannot do it unless you lower your eyes back down. It's a physiological stunt. But in my world, it's cheating, so I don't do it. <laughs> Damn these ethics. <laughs> so, but first of all, he's not moving them. A simple suggestion changes everything. Go ahead and move around those eyebrows so I can see you're trying. And now he's here, <laughs> and he's moving around the eyebrows. And I can see he's actually doing something. If I get absolutely motionless, I've got to be concerned that he's not actually going for the test. So if I see absolutely no movement, go ahead and move around those eyebrows so I can see that you're trying. I see the eyebrows move. Perfect. We've got it. My delivery of how we're going to take care of test them to satisfy yourself, you can make them not work, is a little bit more wordy than others. But I'll show you the other variations first. So let the eyes close, please. And test them and satisfy yourself, you can make them not work. And they open. Great. You just tested them to see that you can make them actually work. Close your eyes now, and this time I want you to test them to see that you can make them not work. Let the eyes open. Good. There's an amazing premise that comes from the word now. <clears throat> you do something once, and then the question of, and what do you notice now? Builds in the presupposition that something has happened. Similar to that, there's an amazing phrase you can also learn here of, we'll do that again, and this time notice what's different. And even if you go in and do the exact same sequence again, there's going to be a perception of, it's different this time. Mm -hmm. So I may make use of that too. You just test them to see that they will work. This is actually on page 28 of your book, if you're writing furiously. Which uh, my book. <laughs> my book. Um, your book? Yeah. Even though you're not going to do something different, you're just using language that... Yeah. I'm going to set up the expectation that we're going to do something different. Yeah. So, you just test them to see they will work. Now I want you to test them to see you can make them not work. We'll do that again, but this time notice what's different would be the phrasing. 
I'm going to revert back to Dave Elman at its core, uh, its core in terms of a different strategy. Just go ahead and let your eyes close. The eyes just asked for the eye closure and they have popped open. Good. Let them close. We'll do that again in a moment, and this time you'll notice what's different. But just for right now, this is not in your book, so watch. For a moment right now, become aware of your left hand. And just think about this for a moment. Don't actually do anything yet. But if I ask you to take that left hand and squeeze into a fist, not yet, but just think about it for now. You could do that if you really wanted to. Nod your head if you understand. And if I ask you to take that hand that was squeezed into a fist and then relax it all the way down, if you really wanted to, you could do that as well, couldn't you? Nod your head if you understand. But I want you to think about this in a brand new way that perhaps you've never thought about before. Let's assume that hand was squeezing all the way down, stuck tight shut. If I asked you to relax that hand, you would first have to unconsciously let go of the tension before you could ever relax it. The same way that if that hand was relaxed before you could squeeze it into a fist, you'd have to have that little unconscious moment that perhaps you're only thinking about for the first time now, that you have to let go of the relaxation before you could tense it up again because you cannot intentionally tighten and relax the same muscle at the same time. Nod your head if you understand. Good. So this time notice what's different. Bring your awareness to your eyelids. Relax those eyelids. And notice now that as long as you hold on, to those, that hold on to that relaxation, those eyes just won't work. Try. As long as you hold on to that relaxation, they just won't work at all. Move around those eyebrows so I can see you're trying. Yeah, good. Quit testing. Relax them all the way down. You're doing fantastic. Let the eyes open for now. That tends to be the style that I'm going to make use of. Just because with this specific language, it's like a one out of a hundred, maybe even one out of two hundred at this point that I get the eyes popping open at that moment. The language is just setting the intention right away. So if the eyes are popping open, at this point, given the quality of the language that's here, you're just not following my instructions and I'm just going to hedge this thing early on to make sure we're going to do this process right. So it's a little bit more wordy, but that's my preferred method these days. So we've achieved eye closure, let the eyes close. Good. The fraction of the brief PMR, there's not much of a way we can do that wrong because it is an internal experience. Take that feeling, set it down across your body. I may watch him in that moment. Good, that's it, just relaxing down. And just basically wait for a moment where I see an exhalation, and then just use that as the means to say, that's right. The eye, the fractionation now, what can possibly go wrong here? In a moment, I'll ask you to let those eyes open and close back down, and he does it now. Let the eyes open, let, let them close, not yet. In a moment, we'll do that. So basically, I want to make sure he's following my pace in this process. Compliance prior to suggestibility. If I go for the first bit of open the eyes and they don't open, don't get all confident on yourself and say that, oh, they're still stuck tight shut. Wow, profound, some profound hypnotic phenomenon. Cool. No, he's not following your instructions. I may give an encouraging statement. You can easily open those eyes, let them open, that's right. It may take a little bit of work, let them open, there you are, good. And as they close, just let that relax you as much as 10 times deeper. You want to go through all the steps, at least the first time you go through the entire thing. Repeat, rinse, exactly as you should. The arm drop. If he's completely helping me out, in a moment, I'll reach over, I'll pick up that arm by the wrist. Today, let that thing just be completely loose, limp, and relaxed. Let it dangle there, again with the gestures. Let it dangle there like a wet towel. Let it be loose, limp, and relaxed. As it falls, just let it plop back down to the arm of that chair. And I reach over and it just shoots up because he's helping me out. Okay, good. Relax it down. <laughs> and I could get into a bunch of extra language about using uh, metaphors here, let it be like a slab of concrete, let it be like marble, let it be like stone, let it be like a sack of rocks, a bag of sand, whatever you'd like to be. You could do all that, though here's my favorite strategy. Just let that entire arm become so heavy, that shoulder just becoming heavy, that elbow just becoming heavy, that entire arm. You'll feel me give it some test pickups. Just feel the natural weight of that arm as I just bounce it here a couple of times. And what's my technique? I'm bouncing the arm, and at the moment he doesn't expect it, then I pick it up and I've got it every single time. Yeah. And with that delivery, if they help me out with the arm, that's always going to work for me at this point. I'm just basically setting up a premise where he can't follow me. Feel the natural weight of that arm as I just bounce it. And as soon as he's not expecting it, I just pick it up. There we go with a wiggle. Excellent. And as it falls, just let it plop. And I'll repeat the instruction just in case. Let it plop all the way down. Good. 
you're doing great. Especially when he does something wrong. Good, you're doing great. Let's do that again this time. Notice what's different. <laughs> I like to repeat the, arm, the floppy arm at least twice. I'm going to try to get in the better habit of calling this the floppy arm because the arm drop is an entirely different technique, just when you hear me say that. So, again, that's a moment you'd hear some who like to teach with a little bit more <laughs> boastful claims. Oh, if they're helping me out, I have them open their eyes and go home. They're not following my instructions. Maybe you didn't phrase it right the first time. Back up, distract, deepen, re-enter. And just inferring the natural weight of that arm, I'm going to get it. Um, don't claim hypnotic phenomenon by accident is my whole pitch. I saw a stage hypnotist one time, we're going to pick up the arm and the thing just shot out stiff and rigid. He goes, oh cool, that was catalepsy. He was deeper than I thought. And I'm going, no, that's the same thing, just not the style you were asking for. And that was a horrible volunteer the entire show and he should have dismissed him. Anyway. Um, so that's going to get the arm where we want it to be in that floppy response. You can let the eyes open for this next couple of processes. So now we're to the moment of truth, which this is the part of the induction why most people out there don't make use of this process, because there's a test involved. Um, what if, we'll begin this one in a moment, we'll begin counting, have you begin counting backwards out loud from 100. With every number you say, let that take you deeper, relax, counting slowly, softly, begin now, and he just takes off like a rocket. Go. 100. Amen. Good. Pause there. You're doing great. And now I want to reestablish a rhythm. So for a moment, just be quiet there. For a moment, just listen to me. 100. 99. Counting about at that pace with every number you say. If he takes off like a rocket, which again, the tonality of suggestions, the way that I've shared it, that just doesn't happen for me. But if it does, pause there. You're doing great. For a moment, just listen to me. We'll have you do it again in this manner and establish the rhythm we want. What if I ask him to start and he just doesn't at all? Well, we can't claim it's amnesia by suggestion until we've actually given the suggestion and achieved the anesthesia, uh, amnesia. So I want him to at least start it. Now, he may just say 100 and stop there. Cool, we'll take it, but test it. And as they're gone, just nod your head and we've got it. But what if no matter what I say, he just keeps going. Roll with it. Begin backwards out loud from 100 now. 100. Good. Now double that mental relaxation. 99. Getting ready to let them go. 99. And now just relax them out of your mind. It still worked. <laughs> Keep going. 97. Deeper and deeper down. 96. Relaxing more and more. 95. And just allow them to fade away. 94. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually rare, given the language that you have here, but you have a couple of options. Uh, the easiest one that I've actually found to be so consistent, uh, 93, give me that. 93. Good, and pause there, you're doing fantastic. And now take all those remaining, again, don't call them numbers, take all those remaining bits and pieces as I pick up this hand and drop it. As it falls, just let them all go. Just let them fall out the back of your mind. And as they're gone, just nod here. I'm just gonna harness the moment and lead it which that takes care of the majority of others. Um, there's another strategy that I'd share, I'll teach it, but I haven't actually done this now for about two years, just because the advances, getting down to the purity of this process, I just don't need it. So for the sake of the demonstration today, just let the eyes close on down. We'll kind of back up just a little bit to give an entry point into it. As I pick up that hand and drop it, just let it be loose, limp, and relaxed. Just let it dangle there like a wet towel. As it falls, just let that take you deeper down every breath you exhale, every word I say relaxing more and more. Anytime I pick up that hand and drop it, just let that take you much deeper down. Good. We now have all the physical relaxation we're going to need. So you can now begin to help yourself to relax mentally. In a moment, we'll have you begin to count backwards out loud from 100 slowly. Just let every number you say help you to double that mental relaxation. By the time you hit 98, maybe even sooner, you might even relax the rest of them out of your mind. When they're gone, notice how good you feel. As you count backwards for the sake of demonstration, just keep going. Begin backwards from 100 out loud now. 100. Good. Now double that mental relaxation. 99. Deeper and deeper down. 98. And just let the rest of them go, but he keeps counting. Deeper, relaxed, 96. letting them become quieter in the mind, let them keep going. 95. 
That's it, and pause there. You're doing great as I pick up this hand and drop it. Take all those remaining bits and pieces, just let them fall away. And he keeps counting. Fighting it, aren't you? <laughs> Better than push further and further away. They're still there. That's it, and pause there. You're doing fantastic. And I tell you what, take this left hand, begin to press down on mine like you're trying to push a door open. And as I count forward from one to five, just take all those remaining bits and pieces, just push them, shove them right out of your mind as one, pressing that hand on down. I can take it, I've got leverage. Two, pressing that hand down stronger and stronger as I count to five, pushing those things right out of the mind. As three, pressing even stronger down, that's right. Sleep, good, just let the mind and the body just relax all the way down, just let every breath you exhale, just help to guide you deeper down. In fact, as I let go of that shoulder, just helps you to relax all the way down. As they're gone, just, relax, just nod your head. Yeah, we got it, just relaxing more and more. In a moment, I'll pick up that hand and drop it. When we do that, those eyes easily reopen. Feeling good, feeling refreshed. One, two, and there you are, feeling good. Let those eyes reopen whenever you're ready. And you do feel good, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> so. That was how I used to do it, was to just abandon the Elman induction and just go directly into the instant, which we'll probably spend some time playing with later today. Um, but again, I've just not needed it since getting back to the core of what this process actually is. Yes? Question. So a couple of times in the course of the class, you've, you've very rapidly yeah. touched their head. Does that ever have the opposite effect? Do people get startled? Specifically, I'm in the habit of doing that because there's a forward moving momentum and I want to be there just in case. And I'm immediately there with the statement of, and I've given permission before to tap the forehead. Uh, as I rock the head back and forth, I'm saying that just as soon as I'm there. And actually, as we get into the instant induction, I'll show you the nuances to how I'm rocking in a way that I'm really following his lead, but not mine. Yeah. But again, let's table the instant for now, just because again, in the structure of this troubleshooting, <clears throat> given the nuances, given the specificity, I've just not needed it so much anymore. At worst, one out of 50, one out of 60. Good, pause there, you're doing great. As I pick up this hand and drop it this time, take all those remaining bits and pieces, just let them fall away. Just let them be gone. Make them gone. As they're gone, just nod your head. And just harness the moment a little bit more authoritatively. <laughs> Was that fun? You've, they were going away and you didn't want to keep counting. That was really weird. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like weird. there's shearing going on in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> Does that, are there any specific concerns about things that may happen in the Elman induction in terms of what may go wrong and this is now how you respond to those moments? Yeah. And again, your individual styles of how you respond to those specific moments may vary. And again, it may vary based on the client in front of you. But that's the flexible structure that's a part of this process, which again, rather than just reading the words and hoping that'll do it for you, here's an interactive process where each and every step along the way, okay, we're at least in an errands one. Brief PMR, okay, that doesn't tell us where we are, but it's just helpful to the process. Fractionation doesn't tell us where we are, but now we're at least at a two, but now we're at least at a four, as soon as we get that confirmation. Got it? So let's do this. Let's take a couple of moments just to get this really drilled in for today. Um, let's break out and practice one more time, groups of two, just like we did before, and just drill it start to finish. We'll spend uh, enough time to basically go through everybody twice. Do we want to be like non-compliant? Um... No, because again, as we practice with the ideal client, that's going to be your expectation. That's actually what you're going to get. I will show you a practice strategy tomorrow, though as to how you can practice the quote client from hell moments and how you can begin to build your own confidence and practice even without actually having a person there. That's coming tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Can, Thanks so much. Can you repeat quickly what you said earlier about the chair comfort and you were giving an, some others would show an alternative chair? What that? Oh, um, if this was the layout of my office and you and I were having a conversation here, you'd be in like a folding chair and the recliner would be over here. Okay. And then in the moment of, great, let's do hypnosis. Let's move over to the hypnosis chair. Nice.